I'm Dave Zarin. Thanks for joining us for this playoff match today on It's Academic. Let's get to our opening round. We start our teams out with 100 points in this opening round. 10 points for each correct answer, 10 points off teams should you miss. Our category is 85 years ago, 1933. Let's go back in time, 85 years to 1933. See if you can identify some of these people and events that made headlines that year. People and events that made headlines in 1933. We begin. Franklin Roosevelt delivered the first of his radio... Fireside yes, chat. Uh, Centennial. Fireside chat. Fireside chat. Fireside chat it is, yes. The Nobel Peace Prize went to this man who had studied genetics in fruit flies. Yes, Centennial. It's not medical. It's not. What? Okay. What? You may answer. Medical. He said medical. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Uh, Mendel. Mendel. Uh, Thomas Hunt Morgan with fruit flies. Next, in 1933, an earthquake and tsunami hit this island, Japan's... Yes, it's Centennial. Hunch, 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 Japan's yeah. largest is right. Yes. Next, in 1933, this Hungarian physicist conceived the idea of a nuclear chain... Teller? Yes, yeah, Centennial. Yeah, yes, yes. Sure, Teller. Uh, Zillard is the right answer. S-Z-I-L-A-R-D. Leo Zillard. Next, the ratification of this number amendment moved inauguration... 20? 20? Yes, 20th. 20th was the correct one. Yes. The federal government obtained an island in San Francisco Bay for this prison. Bryn Mawr. Alcatraz. Alcatraz, that's right. Next. An American pilot first sighted these Venezuelan waterfalls, the world's highest. Centennial. Angel. 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 Angel Falls. Angel Falls is right. And lastly, RKO Pictures released this movie. Falston? Uh, Citizen Kane. King Kong was the right answer. That's the end of the opening round on It's Academic. Things are happening at Giant. And by Morgan State University. Growing the future, leading the world. And yes, that was the Centennial Drill Team and their Eagle, and they're going to be with us throughout the program today. We have a wonderful audience here today. Everyone's got some signs and cowbells out there. going to make them some noise because we've got nine great players here. They all won their first matches. They're here today for the playoffs. One of today's teams is moving on to the semifinals. Let's find out about these teams. Let's go to first to Falston. Max and Adam, first time on set for you guys. And Richard, nice to have you back again. Max, tell us about yourself, please. Hi, my name is Max Bobbin. I'm a senior at Falston High School. Aside from academic team, I'm a part of the uh, Falston High School drama company and tech crew, and I'm an officer for our International Thespian Society. I'd like to thank our principal, R Mr. Jester, and his daughter for coming out, the McClouds, and our coach, Mr. Ben White. You did all that without any kind of notes. You did a nice job, Max. <laughs> A very busy young man on campus there. Adam, welcome to the show. Uh, hi, my name is Adam. In addition to being um, the team captain for the It's Academic team, I'm also a co-captain of the Speech and Debate Club and a member of the Maryland Fencing Club. And I'd like to thank our wonderful, wonderful teammates for coming out today in solidarity. Thank you, guys. Wonderful, wonderful. I like that. And uh, let's go over to Richard. And Richard, nice to have you back. And you were telling me earlier that your sister had been on the show here a few years ago. Is yes, that, that right? Is so, so this is a family affair. Tell us about yourself, Richard. Hi, my name is Richard Depp. I'm a senior at Falston High School. In addition to its academic, I am a member of the speech and debate team. I'm a member of various honor societies, including our school's national honor society, and I'm aspiring to become an Eagle Scout this spring. I'd like to thank our alternates for coming out here, including Parker Olson, Stephen Willits, and Jamie Salvatierra. Thank you for mentioning those alternates. Congratulations, too, on your Eagle achievement. No mean feat. Gentlemen, these questions are for you. Look at the monitor, please. No penalties. 20 points for each correct answer. Choose one word from each column to get what line of zero longitude that runs through Greenwich, England. Prime meridian. That's it. Second person singular and a female sheep. Here you have definitions of what two words that sound alike but have different meanings. Homonym. Uh, what are those homonyms? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, second person. You. You? You, you it is, yeah. yes, indeed. Okay. Y O U and E W E. Next, we filled in all the vowels in the name of what ancient Greek messenger god known to the Romans as Mercury? Hermes. That's it. Here's a choice among bubble, strength, and noon. Which of these words is a palindrome? Noon. 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 Noon, that's right. And lastly, I'm not worried about the deficit. It's big enough to take care of itself. 
This tongue-in-cheek remark was made by what 40th president who once had been a movie star? Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan. That's it. Nicely done for Falston. Takes it to 190. Nice start to the game. We move next to the ladies from Bryn Mawr and Anna and Myra and Elizabeth. Nice to have you all back again. We have two seniors here, I think, and one sophomore, yeah? Yeah. Anna, tell us about yourself. Hi, I'm Anna, and um, in addition to its academic, I ride horses on an IEA team, and I'd like to thank our coaches, Ms. Cullen and Ms. Bowles. Wonderful. They appreciate that. An equestrian. Myra, tell us your story. Hi, I'm Myra. I'm a senior at Bryn Mawr. In addition to its academic, I'm on the robotics team, and I have a black belt in kung fu, and I would like to thank our friends and family for coming to support us today. Wonderful. We will not mess with you. I've said that to you before. <laughs> Elizabeth, tell us about yourself. Hi, I'm Elizabeth. I'm a sophomore at Bryn Mawr. In addition to its academic, I'm part of my school's honor council and on our school newspaper. And I'd like to thank our alternates, Serena and Jordan, for being here today. Important part of the team, too. Appreciate that, Elizabeth. All right, look at your monitor, please, Bryn Mawr. These are yours. No penalties. 20 points for each correct answer. Take one word from each column to get the title of what 1962 book by Rachel Carson about the impact of pesticides. Silent Spring. Yes, indeed. A worshipped statue and inactive lazy. Here you see definitions for two words that are spelled differently but pronounced alike. Idol. That's it. All the consonants are missing from the name of what Roman goddess of the hunt, the equivalent of the Greek Artemis. Diana. Yes, indeed. Here's a choice among Taiwan, Ireland, and New Guinea. Which of these islands is the largest? Uh, New Guinea. That's right. And lastly, I've been clear that Brexit means Brexit. This was the emphatic statement of what woman who has had to deal with Brexit as the current Prime Minister of Great Britain? Theresa May. Theresa May. Nicely done, Bryn Mawr. Thank you. 210. And our third team today hails from Centennial and Emmeline and Jacob and Fayez. Nice to have you back again. And uh, Emmeline, excuse me. Emmeline, I got it right the first time. Tell us about yourself. Hi, I'm Emmeline Almy. I'm a senior at Centennial High School. I'd like to thank the team from Blake for helping us to practice by scrimmaging with us. I'd like to thank the Centennial High Boosters for their generous financial support of our club. And I'd like to thank my family for coming out to support me today. Nicely done. Nicely done. Thank you very much. And Jacob, our captain. How many years have you been on our show, uh, Jacob? Two. Two years. All right. Always a good player. <laughs> Tell us about yourself. Uh, hi, I'm Jacob. I'm a senior at Centennial High School. I'd like to thank our Paul Cartoonist host, Dave Zarin. I'd like to thank our uh, super eagle and bus driver, Michael Gelman, and our awesome drill team for coming out to support us today. Great adjectives. I love those. I love those. Fayez, tell us about yourself, Hi. please. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Fayez Zaidi. I'm a senior at Centennial High School. I'd like to thank our substitutes, Adam Knox and Stepan Konoplev. I also like to thank Giant Foods for sponsoring its academic. And lastly, I'd like to thank uh, my two sisters, Layla and Mario, who came out to support me today, who are part of our um, uh, feeder schools that also have an executive program. Absolutely. Yes, indeed. You've got a lot of students out there kind of lined up preparing for this game. Sure. Yeah. All right, Centennial, these questions are yours. Look at the monitor, if you would. Please take one word from each column, and you can name what book by Stephanie Meyer. Breaking, 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 oh, yeah. breaking Dawn. Breaking Dawn. Oh, yeah. Bre breaking Dawn. Breaking Dawn is right. Yes? <laughs> the atmosphere and one who inherits. Here you have clues to what two words that are spelled differently but pronounced alike. Air. Air it is. There are four vowels missing here from the name of what Southeast Asian country whose capital is Phnom Penh? Cambodia. That's right. Audiology, zoology, or topography? If you were interested in the physical features of the local countryside, you'd be studying which of these? Topography. That's right. Liberty cannot be established without morality. Here you have the words of what 19th century Frenchman who wrote Democracy in America? Uh, Tocqueville. Yeah. Uh, Tocqueville. Tocqueville it is. Nicely done, Centennial. Takes you to 2.30.
Welcome back to It's Academic. And again, thank you to the Centennial Drill team. You guys were just great. You know, one of today's teams, as we said at the top of the show, is moving on to the semifinals, but no one's going home empty handed. That's because the Baltimore Orioles are once again proud to support It's Academic, and we'll be providing tickets for all of today's students. You know, celebrating the success of our young people makes us all fans. Find out more about the Orioles' involvement in education and in the lives of youth in our community. Why don't you go visit them at their website, OriolesReach.com. And before you head out to that ballpark, check us out on our It's Academic Facebook page. Before we move on to the picture perfect round, we're going to do a check on that score. Right now, Falston is at 190, Bryn Mawr at 210, and Centennial at 230. <laughs> And that score for Centennial, we added an extra 10 points because in that first round, we misread the question about genetics, so you got those points. All right, we go to the picture-perfect round. Everybody plays. There's a picture with each of these questions. 20 points for each correct answer, 20 points off should our teams miss. First picture coming into view. Here, artist William Chase painted wash day in what New York City borough that was once home to baseball's... Yes, Centennial. Brooklyn. Brooklyn, Brooklyn, yeah. Brooklyn? Brooklyn is right, yes. Before Marie Curie and her husband discovered radium, she had discovered what other radioactive element named... Yes, Polonium. Centennial. Polonium. Polonium, named for her native land, is right. Yes. Medusa, who is depicted in this ancient mosaic, was eventually slain by what fearless... Oh, no. Perse yes. Perseus. 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 Yeah. Perseus, that's right, the fearless Greek hero. Next. What is the product of these expressions? Yes, uh, Bryn Mawr. A cube minus B cubed. That is right. A3 minus B3. Next. The Monroe Doctrine was not written by James Monroe, but by what future president then serving as Monroe's Secretary of State? John Quincy yes, yeah. Centennial. Uh, John Quincy Adams. John Quincy Adams is right. Next picture coming up. Born a slave, James Armistead became a spy and obtained information leading to a critical American victory at what Virginia site in 1781? <laughs> Yes, oh, Centennial. Yorktown. 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 Yorktown is right. Yep. Here's a choice. A 625-pound boat, when floating at one-third of its depth, displaces how many pounds of water? Centennial. Oh, okay. 625. 625 it is. Last picture coming up. This kind of vegetation is common in what group of West Indies islands, which the U.S. purchased from Denmark? Centennial? Virgin, Virgin, Islands. Virgin, Islands. Virgin Islands. Virgin Islands in 1917. And that's the end of the picture perfect round. enjoying this game at home here in the studio before we ask any more questions a few introductions let's meet the faculty coaches and administrators at our three fine schools first to Falston with 190 points and Adam some familiar figures back there tell us who they are this is our principal mr. Jasper and this is our coach mr. Wyatt outstanding gentlemen both thank you for all you do and for the support you give to these young men you got your own cheering section out there. Bryn Mawr, 230 points, and Myra, familiar ladies back there as well. Tell us about them. Uh, behind me are our two coaches, Ms. Cullen, who teaches history, and Ms. Bowles, who teaches math. Exceptional both. Thank you so much for all you're doing, for always being here. And Centennial and Jacob, you guys already have 370 points. Did you all arrange yourselves like that perfectly? You look like you're ready to break into song. Look at that over there. Jacob, tell us who they are. Uh, all right, so this is uh, Mr. Heslin. He's one of our coaches. Uh, next up, we've got Mr. Renama. He's one of our assistant principals. And then we have our other two coaches, Dr. Eric Seifter and Mrs. Sarah Seifter. And coach of the year as well, the Sophie Altman Coach of the Year. Congratulations, Dr. Seifter. Thank you all for being here for everything you do. Part of the academic family. You know, in our next round of questioning, should our teams answer all eight of our questions correctly, we make a big fuss. We release balloons and we light up lights, and those lights are flashing in front of you, Myra, right now. So would you be good enough to pick packet one, two, or three for Falston? Uh, three. Let's give them three. All right, Max and Adam and Richard, I have great faith in you that you're going to get all eight of these. Don't let me down. Here we go. The first large-scale electric power grid in the country was driven by ten generators placed near what waterfalls on the New York-Canadian border? Niagara? That's it. Of the eight states whose names begin with the letter M, two are in New England. 
Massachusetts, and what state that separated from Massachusetts in 1820? Maine. Maine is right. In the Anthony, Anthony Burgess novel, An Old, Any Old Iron, the iron in question is what legendary sword of King Arthur? Uh, yeah, sword of King Arthur. The Ex Excalibur? It is Excalibur. Yes, gentlemen. Good answer. Science question for you. Look at your monitor, if you would, please. Which of these three choices best describes the function of blood cells known as platelets or thrombocytes? Aid in blood clotting? That is correct. Well done. In 1918, forces led by Lawrence of Arabia attacked and destroyed a Turkish regiment on the road to what city, now the capital of Syria? Um, Damascus? That's it. Not even tech support could save the crew from the malfunctioning of the HAL 9000 computer in 2001, A Space Odyssey, by what science fiction writer? Arthur C. Clarke. Well done. Math question. Look at your monitor, please. Evaluate this expression. Give me your answer as a positive integer, please. Six. Five, six, 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 it is indeed 16. All right, Boston, 25 bonus points if you get this. Listen carefully. Though he died in 1658, the body of what Puritan who had served as Lord Protector of England was dug up and posthumously executed in 1661? Richard the Third. Richard the Third. Uh, good try. Oliver Cromwell was the right answer. Still a good round for Boston. Takes you to 3.30. 3.30. They came this close to getting those bonus points. Might happen for Bryn Mawr. Jacob, pack at one or two for Bryn Mawr. Uh, two. Let's give two. All right. Anna and Myra and Elizabeth. Again, I want to see some balloons. Let's get all these. All right. In 1776, the first public reading of the Declaration of Independence was heralded by the ringing of what historic bell in Philadelphia? The Liberty Bell. That's it. The dairy industry didn't have to pay a public relations person to come up with the name by which we identify what galaxy that includes Earth. The Milky Way. That's it. India's first prime minister graduated from what British university, the traditional rival of Oxford? Cambridge. That's right. Look at your monitor, please, for your science question. The semicircular canals which allow us to maintain our balance are found in which of these locations? The inner ear. Inner ear is it. To see a chariot race in ancient Rome, you would have gone to a stadium whose name links circus with what Latin word for greatest? Colosseum? Uh, circus Maximus. Maximus was the right answer there. Good try. There aren't many laughs in what 1954 William Golding novel about a group of boys stranded on a deserted island. Lord of the Flies. Yeah. Math question. Ladies, solve for X for me, please. <laughs> Three. It is three. Last question for you in this round. The French Revolution's reign of terror is said to have ended in 1794 with the execution of what man nicknamed the incorruptible? Rose Pierre. Well done. Good round for Bryn Mawr. Take the 370. All right, it's all up to Centennial to see some balloons and see some flashing lights. Packet number one. All right, Emmeline, Jacob, and Faez, let's get all eight of these. The paleontologists recently discovered the remains of a new species of dinosaur about the size of a school bus in what largest African desert? The Sahara. Sahara. Yes, the Sahara. <laughs> That's right. The French author La Fontaine made a name for himself by turning into verse the old fables of what ancient Greek slave? Aesop. 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 Aesop is right. It's been estimated that the electronic waste we threw away last year contained about $20 billion worth of what metal with symbol AU? Gold. Gold. Gold, Gold. Gold it is. Science question for you. You would most likely find nitrogen-fixing bacteria in which of these places? Uh, on the roots of some plants. The roots is absolutely right. Both Henry Clay and Daniel Webster had sons killed in what 1840s war that both senators had opposed? The Mexican-American Mexican -American War. Uh, the Mexican-American War. That's it. Your GPS won't help you find Yoctapatafa County as it's a fictional place created by what author of The Sound and the Fury? Uh, Faulkner. That's right. Math question. Simplify this expression when x equals 5, giving your answer as a positive four, integer. Four, four, four. 4. It is indeed 4. 25 bonus points if you can tell me this. You would be quite wealthy if you owned an original 1776 copy of The Wealth of Nations by what Scottish economist? Uh, Adam Smith. Adam Smith. That's it for 25 points. 555. Five, five.
super bad, you know we're tough and mean. CHS has got the number one team. We're big, bad, super bad, you know we're tough and mean. And they're talking tough and mean, but they are really nice young ladies. We're really happy they're here today. We head into the grab bag round now, and let's check that score before we ask any more questions right now. Falston is at 330, Bryn Mawr is at 370, and Centennial at 555. In this final round, our questions are worth 20 points, 20 off if our teams miss 30-point visual questions, minus 30 should our teams miss those. Teams, good luck. Let's have a good round. Here we go. There's a lot of live action in Asbury Park, New Jersey during its annual walk to celebrate what undead creatures. Uh, All right, zombies. Centennial. Uh, zombies. zombies is right. Next. Europe's entire southern coastline came under NATO protection in 2017 when NATO membership was extended to what small M initial Balkans? Oh, yes, oh, Centennial? Macedonia. Macedonia. No, Montenegro was the right answer there. Next is a... Next, a local food bank gained $17,000 from a parade held for what NFL team that didn't win any games last season? Uh, the Browns. Browns. Centennial? The Browns. Browns. Take it easy on the equipment there, guys. 30-point question. Look at your monitors. This is the landscape near what K-initialed city? Yes, Centennial. Can you start Cartoon. Cartoon. Uh, the second largest city in Afghanistan is Kandahar. Kandahar was the right answer there. Next choice. Which of these cloud types forms closest to the Earth's surface? Stratus, Altostratus, or Cirrus? Yes, Centennial. Cirrus. 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 Uh, Stratus was the answer there. Next. The current novel, Home Fire, is a modern retelling of the Greek tragedy about what woman who tried to get a burial for her... Yes, Centennial. Antigone. Antigone is right. Next, a set of books fits onto a shelf four and a half feet long. If each volume is three inches wide, how many books are there in the set? Falston. Which got guys? How many books? Eighteen. Eighteen? Eighteen is right. Good, you pulled that one out. Thirty points. Look at your monitors. The answers you get from literature depend on the questions you pose. That was Margaret Atwood from The Handmaid's Tale, but the buzzer says, our game is over. We will be right back. Our first congratulations with 350 points, the team from Falston, Max, Adam, and Richard. Next, let's give it up for the team from Bryn Mawr with 370 points. And they're going on to the semifinals today. It was all centennial with 545 points. Join us next week for Severna Park, South River, and Calvert Hall in another playoff. I'm Dave Zarin. I'll see you then. Audience, come on down.